Welcome to Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon. My name is Mondo Fresco and today I am with singer, songwriter, producer, Mexican legend, worldwide superstar. Whoa. I'm talking about Pepe Aguilar. Pepe, how are you? Mondo, man. Muy contento de estar aquí contigo. Really happy to be here. Y nada, aquí dispuesto a platicar de lo que quieras. Pepe, you know, we're we're big fans. Everyone in this room is big fans of yours. Thank and, you. And we're really excited to to have you. Uh, as I shared earlier, we want to know about your journey. We want to know how you fell in love con la música mexicana, right? And con la música, period. How you fell in love with music, period. Do you remember a moment like that? Because I know you come from a, a family mm -hmm. that was deep in music and, and you were singing when you were like almost like a baby, but do you remember that memory when you first fell in love with, with music? Well, now that you're asking that specific question, yeah, I, I think I do remember. Uh, maybe I was around seven, eight years old when I got my first uh, cassette player. It was a eight track player, <laughs> portable one. And I, I remember that I, I used to listen to Disney uh, stories like uh, it was it was my thing. And then I started listening to music on yeah. that thing, music that my brother used to hear. And cosas, my brother is eight years older than me. Entonces, se lo oía rock uh -huh. a los 16. I was eight, and I, at eight, I was listening to really hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. So, so that kind of built my uh, my operating system. Yeah, you know, uh, that kind of built what I am musically. Listening to so many different styles and kinds of uh, and expressions of, uh, of of the musical kind. Eh, desde José Alfredo Jiménez y Los Relámpagos del Norte hasta Jetro Tull y este Edgar Winter y Pink Floyd y Jesse Rush y Man, yeah. and, and you fall in love with, with, with rock music and in your family there was a lot of, you know, Mexican mariachi it was it was such a different type of, of genre mm -hmm. for you. And I know you start getting into music, right? You start getting into music and you start, uh, I heard that you got into a, a rock band. Yeah. And you would sing in, in that band too. I would sing and play and write the songs and produce also. Um, yeah, I started telling you about uh, how I started listening to music, then I went somewhere else, but it was it was everything was connected yeah like one thing led to another and when i started discovering music in in spanish and mm -hmm. also in english i started dreaming of being those those artists that i admired like i started imagining myself okay close my eyes at night and thought about being on stage like Led Zeppelin, or yeah, <laughs> like my dad, or yeah. Vicente Fernandez, or stuff like that. I was very young and had the bug already, you know. Um, and also, it was not only about your average dream, which mm. is about becoming famous, yeah, and loved and relevant and accepted, and all those things that everybody wants. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, I'm not, not original in that sense. Where I think I'm a little original <laughs> in the music side is that it, it was way too embedded in me. It was I, unquestionable. It yeah. was like part of me. I, I, I didn't question it. You know, music was part of my life. I wanted it to be part of my life. I made it part of my life it, since day one that I had conscious of who I was. Well, I still don't have conscious enough of who I am, but 
uh, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, when, when you start getting a sense of what you like, what you don't like, when you start getting your ego built, music was always present. Yeah. And it hasn't changed. It no ha cambiado. No ha cambiado. It is mi mayor eh, y mejor argumento, mi mejor amiga. Yeah. Y también eh, la causa de muchísimas de mis penas. Yeah. Like it's it's it's, it's that's that's music. For yeah, me. yeah. It's it's what makes you, the your your world go round, right? Yeah. You know, good, good and bad. Your 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 dad, uh, the the legendary Antonio Aguilar. Uh, when you were doing other genres of music, was he? reeling you back in like no 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 guys so canta aquí you know canta mariachi did, did would you hear that and he tried of course yeah <laughs> claro que quiso muchas veces que no cantara eh, con otra cosa que no fuera música mexicana yeah yo empecé con banda los primeros álbums que grabé con música mexicana bueno primero rock rock yeah después eh, música mexicana y con la música mexicana Empecé con banda y luego con mariachi. Eh, pero mi papá era muy abierto, ¿eh? Sí. Él, él, él era una persona que... Él empezó cantando ópera. Wow. So no, he sabía. understood. Music is music. Nada más que nosotros tenemos una tradición, pues, bien mexicana, pues. Ya. Yeah. O sea, 100% de Zacatecas, de, del rancho, de las vacas, de las tortillas de esa mano, de yeah. el chile colorado en molcajete, de las pastorelas en diciembre, o sea, 100%, man. Yeah. It, it's, it's, not a, it's, it's not a lie, it's not an act. It's, yeah. it's not, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Entonces, pues mi papá quería que a fuerza me fuera yo por ahí, que yeah. no cambiara nada de eso, ¿no? <laughs> He didn't understand that I was perfectly able to do both things. Yeah. Now I'm 55 years old. I just turned 55 three days ago. Happy, happy belated birthday, thank by you, the way. Thank you. And I can tell you that I still respect as much as I have respected all my life what my traditions mean. Yeah. What my culture means. I know who I am. And I also still like... The Foo Fighters and, <laughs> and, and and Muse and and, and I, I dig loud music and yeah. go crazy on my stage and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, you know, there's only one life. You have to do what you want. Yeah, as long as you don't hurt anybody, including yourself. Hey, Mondo here. Right now, you can have everything you want on the network you really want. Introducing my plan. Get exactly what you want, only pay for what you need. Starting at just $30 per line per month for four unlimited lines with auto pay plus taxes and fees. From there, you decide exactly what goes in and what stays out of your plan. So you pay for what you want. Head over to verizon.com slash Mondo right now you said verizon.com slash mondo right yeah yeah verizon.com slash mondo but we're st we're still shooting the commercial oh oh i'm sorry no no you're, you're good man get exactly what you want only pay for what you need starting at 30 dollars per line all right let me help you out yeah. all right so you go here of of uh singing like opera you said your your dad was doing opera music and when i when i hear and listen to some of the the legends and, and even yourself there's there's some opera-esque in those voices in the in the chentes and in the infantes right like you hear that that opera type of 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 energy and, and voice how how connected do you think it is to to la musica mexicana I think that everything has to do with the way it started to be commercialized and popular because it started on, re in, on, on radio and on movies. So the first charros weren't actually charros. They were just trained singers that portray certain, certain uh, acts. 
and charros were very popular back then. Like it were like cowboys. Yeah. You know, in the forties for for the U.S. The similar, they were similar. So Jorge Negrete, for example, he was not he was not a charro. Uh, like he he wasn't around horses and cows and the ranch and all that. My father was. Yeah. For sure. So, uh, answering your question, yo creo que todo el mundo empezó como que a cantar educadamente, pero estaba de moda vestirte de charro por las películas. Uh -huh. Entonces, hay muchos cantantes así que son más bien, en esa época, eh, estudiosos del canto y que they happen to dress up like a charro. Y entonces hicieron leyenda, Luis Aguilar es otro de ellos, que en, también muy, muy famoso, pero Don Vicente Fernández, que en paz descanse, también él se hizo charro después, pero eran cantantes que admiraban a Pedro Vargas, que admiraban a, 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 a cantantes que tenían otro tipo de escuela y que era más bien no, pues, educada. Ajá. También había cantantes rancheros, rancheros, rancheros que no cantaban con ese... Oh, that, that, that thing, ¿no? Como un charro avitia, o un este, eh, Cuco Sánchez, o un José Alfredo Jiménez. They just did their thing and they didn't care. Pero yeah. sí tiene razón. Eh, hubo una, una gran, gran, gran escuela que yo creo que el culpable más grande es Jorge Negrete <laughs> y, y la época del cine mexicano. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I. I look at, at the type of music that, that you've been making since since I can remember. And what, what I see, what, how I envision your, your career is in, in Traje de Charro, right? And uh, your style of is very traditional and, and also unique at the same time. Like you, you made it you made it your own, right? You made the La Musica Mexicana that you make, you made it your own. And was that difficult for you did that come normal did that come natural it came natural because of the upbringing that i had musically speaking everything that i just told you about music and what was the bands that i listened to when i was young so that created that fusion that you hear in my music mm. and uh yeah i guess that those things you can't you can't plan ahead it's just they just happen You know, it just happened. Cuando empecé a grabar música de mariachi y a producirla, porque llevo producidos 20, no, como 26 de mis 33 álbums. Felicidades, man. That's yeah, man. Amazing. Thank you. Entonces, siempre ha sido, a ver, how am I going to do this thing now? Yeah. You know, so I start, I start digging deep and, and, Just listen to my heart. I, I, I swear to God, for as, as corny and, and, um, ¿cómo se dice? Estereotipo que suene, cliche, yeah. cliche, perdón, cliche que suene. It's true, man. When, when I'm going to do a new album, yes, of course, I think about continuity and commercial success. I would be a liar if I tell you that I don't think about those things. But that's not the most important thing and i swear on the memory of my both of my parents that's not the most important thing most important thing is that i am proud of what i'm going to do and that i can come up with something new yeah that i haven't done before um then it's, it's a success a successful album for me yeah. <laughs> um, then it is a successful album for me because I'm, I'm creating something, I'm leaving something uh, for others to yeah. connect with yeah. that is honorable, that is truthful. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it, but, uh, but the energy which it was created with, it's, it's true. And if you connect to it, You gotta feel it. And if, if you feel it, then 
success. I, 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 I'm successful. Yeah. It, it's, it comes from the heart, right? Like it's, it's, uh, it's part of your passion. It's, it's, it's who you are. Like you're not, like you said, you're not, you're not faking it. What you do is it, it just comes from within you and it comes natural. And I think that's what has made your music and, and your career just so, so special and, and unique. And I feel like people really relate to you, you know, as, as, as a, as a producer, as a singer, songwriter, but as a person too. Yeah. You know? Well, some people think that I'm a troublemaker, <laughs> that I don't know when to shut up, <laughs> that I'm very opinionated, opinionated, um, that I'm old fashioned. Um, what's the biggest misconception you think that's out there? That's that you, you, you know, it's not true. Oh man. I, I the biggest misconception is that we humans think we know something regardless of whatever it is on any field we only know what we think we only know what we have in our heads mm -hmm. and that it's determined by your experiences your traumas <laughs> your pain and your yeah. So however you see me, it's your deal. Yeah. It's not mine. It's your problem. Yeah. It's not mine. You know, I, I it's impossible to be a monedita de oro and everybody like me. Hey, thank you guys. I know you like me, but I, believe me, I'm just the human being. There's a lot of people that hate my guts and yeah. that's okay. And if you're out there showing yourself and being opinionated, yeah. even more so. Yeah. But I don't give a shit. <laughs> when did you become so so numb to it, or are you are you numb to to what people say? What do you think? You think you, you think I'm numb to it, or I, not? I, or not? <laughs> I think so. But when when did that happen? Uh, when do you think that happened? When you were like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, me importa poco lo que diga la gente. Like, okay, I don't, I'm I don't care. sound like a prostitute. And, and <laughs> believe me, I have the utmost respect for that profession. <laughs> but, um, o sea, no estoy siendo denigrante de ninguna manera ni disrespectful, pero I am going to sound like a prostitute. <laughs> Cuando me dejó de importar, when I start caring about, you know, being liked or surprising or, in, in social media, I'm yeah. talking about. We're yeah. talking about that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it doesn't make me be a better singer if if I have a viral whatever, mm -hmm. and it doesn't make me a, a un cantante malo, este, si no lo tengo. Yeah. They're two different games. Y también me puse a pensar en que por qué me metí a las redes sociales. Yo me metí a las redes sociales. Early. Very early. Yeah. Like my PepeGuilar.com thing, it's 30 years old. You know, man? <laughs> I started Twitter, I don't know, yeah. maybe 10, 11. It says there, maybe 10 years ago, more than a decade. Facebook, lo mismo más de 10 años. And I, I, I truly enjoy it, you know, the good old days. <laughs> I truly enjoyed them with a passion because it was the first time that we were able to connect directly without an intermediate, an, an intermediario, yeah. without a third party. Yeah. And we were all innocent, you know, fans and artists and creators and everybody was enjoying it in a good way. And no sacabas tus traumas ahí ni ni lo usabas como para para lo que ahora se usa. To bully people and all that that's sí. going on now, yeah. Pero, pero fui evolucionando y me fui dando cuenta de cómo estaba evolucionando. Y en ese momento, pues ya no me la empecé a tomar en serio. Al principio sí estaba muy inocente. Hacía cosas antes de que hubiera manera de hacer lives. Los hacía... En, 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 había una, había una, una aplicación que se llamaba TweetVid. Yeah. Y, y yo me iba a un estudio... 
y ponía cuatro cámaras and I have a, had a switcher and I made my videos there. Wow. Yeah. That's that's a, yeah, that's yeah. ahead of your game there. It, it, I, that was crazy. And then I, I I did a radio station uh also eh, y lo sacamos. En fin, we, we we did a whole bunch of stuff when when people really were there for the right reasons. I I think that right now there are still a whole bunch that are there because they follow you and they like you and they listen to you. Pero también se ha vuelto como un juego eh, como medio boring. En, en el sentido de que ya, yeah, hate se volvió un deporte. And, sí, it's giving. I don't give a damn. Pero I, I rather wait, waste my time playing video games yeah. if I'm going to waste time. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I rather, you know, put something more um interesting in my brain than than hate from somebody i don't even know yeah for sure for and sure. give it time with <laughs> with your your kids now being in in the in the limelight right is that something that you have to talk to them about as well oh man believe me <laughs> 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 no no they, they, they're they're in trouble <laughs> they yeah. do care uh, about this yeah you know and they're in trouble uh, i talked to them about it i think i told them it's just a game man yeah you know it, it depends on on you and we go back to the same thing it's the opinion that somebody has of me is not in my hands but the opinion that you have of yourself mm -hmm. it is You know, the opinion I have of myself is in my hands. Yeah. And that, that, it, it's not, no es en tela de juicio, y mucho menos por gente que está en las redes sociales. O sea, yeah. they're not going to tell me who I am. Give yeah. me a freaking break. Yeah. Please. You know, pero they don't understand that. Like, like the youngsters right now, it's, it's like, everything is about that. Right. It's crazy. You know, all your peers are into that, and... Ya no se trata de que sea bueno o que sea malo, se trata de que esté de moda. And, and, and that, it, it's all about that now. Vaping, yeah. challenges, bullying, fads. I mean, it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> For people that do care a lot. Yeah. I, I thank God at 55 with 33 albums, It's a little harder to get canceled. Uh, I mean, I could, of course, I could F up. Yeah, right, Like a human right. being, and I could get canceled. Yeah. If I do something really, 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 I should get canceled. Yeah. But not because you didn't like my last single, or you didn't like what I said, or the tone I said it. No. Yeah. No, no. Or, or, if, uh, or if you don't like, uh, you know, a certain food, or... Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Or because, I mean, we're, we're, we're very delicate right now. Yeah. So please be delicate with me, Mondo. Don't, don't. <laughs> I'm just getting started right now, Pepe. Yeah, please. <laughs> Pepe, speaking of, of father-son, father-daughter, uh, I went to MSG, New York, Madison Square Garden. I just saw Drake a couple weeks ago. Cool. It was my first time there. I heard that your first time on that stage you were three years old yep is that true that's what they tell me i don't remember but yeah there's some pictures of it so there's evidence what what have you heard about that about that day um my mother and father were very very emotional and proud uh and irresponsible <laughs> <laughs> You know, can you imagine what happened today if you bring out a three-year-old uh, on a horseback? <laughs> you know, social workers will be all over my dad. Uh, go viral. Go, it would go viral. You know? <laughs> that Mexican, that irresponsible Mexican. You know, that's why we don't like him. You know, that's why we're building walls. Look at them. Anyway, yeah, yeah three. I was uh, shown um, and and did some noises that 
people said that we're it was singing it was singing <laughs> <laughs> un guaco, te echaste un guaco. Yeah. <laughs> un grito <laughs> yeah but that that was the beginning man and uh i haven't stopped since that's beautiful so i know that you're now on on a tour that's very unique and different to to what you have been doing in the past mm. talk to me about this this tour yeah it's been five years since i've been working with horses and the family on this jaripeo sin fronteras concept uh for five years i've been concentrated on that but i am a solo act and that's what i've done all my life so that jaripeo sin fronteras eventually was going to stop being my priority uh and it doesn't mean that i'm going to stop doing it it's just that i cannot forget about you know my solo career and what i do by myself which gives me a chance to present more stuff and not become political political but make you think a little bit more with the images that i with all the content and everything that i produce for the show and i went a little crazy and bought like 150 meters of screen and wow. so i designed we designed a show that could really embody it and present what i want people to see in a very very spectacular way and what i want them to see is is is, is just Mexican traditions, musical uh, moments, and technology mixed with what I'm very proud of my culture. Yeah. And we're doing that with the Pepe Aguilar show. And at the same time, we are preparing uh, what what's going to be the, the new Jaripeo Sin Frontera show that unfortunately we had to postpone the tour uh, because of the content of it. Um, it's not an easy task. It's 150 people doing the show. Wow. Putting together something new. It was more difficult than what we expected this time around. Mm -hmm. And we had to postpone. Um, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Uh, we changed al proveedor de escenografía y de efectos especiales que estábamos trabajando y ahora vuelvo a trabajar con una gente que normally works with Cirque du Soleil. Wow. So this is the second time that he's going to produce the show for me. And the wait is going to be worth it for all those 60,000 plus people that have their tickets, hold on to them. I can assure you it's going to be worth it. Uh, ya pasó, ya me, me, me pasó con este show de, de las pantallotas. It wasn't ready. I, I was supposed to, I was supposed to be playing January on, uh, on an arena here in, in the Coachella Valley. Oh, okay. And the show wasn't ready. So I had to postpone. Yeah. And... I finally did the show in July because it's not that, okay, we postpone right now, but next week that we have everything ready, we can go and, 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 and do everything again. It doesn't work that way because yeah. next week it's already filled by somebody else. And the week after that, and the week after that, and the week after that. So you have to find a place mm -hmm. where you can accommodate the new dates. Yeah. It's a pain in the <laughs> I bet. You know, because there's a lot of shows and the places where we play are huge. And normally those are arenas where either our hockey players, hockey teams or basketball teams play mm -hmm. or both. So, yeah, challenges, pero hay mucho que hacer. El show de Ángela también. Leonardo está haciendo su nuevo show, lo estamos produciendo. Irani y David, que esta chava es un super talento, 
también estamos produciendo ya su show. Ahorita está de gira con Carol G. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, we're, we're, we're constantly working with two record companies, one publishing company, one touring company. Wow. And you're managing your, your kids, right? Yeah, I'm co-managing. Yeah. Co-managing. With my wife. That's, that's, that's important. That's, that's, that's special than just, you know, throwing them out. Yeah. To, uh, uh, in the wild, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Is it, is it, <laughs> is it, is it, uh, obviously it's fun. Is it also, I mean, you know, family. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> well, that, that's where I was going with it. <laughs> That's where I was going with it. Like, is it, is it, can it be challenging to work with your kids sometimes? It's very challenging. Yeah, Are you I kidding? Bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't challenging when they were kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But now they're adults. Yeah. Or at least they're getting there, you know? Yeah. They're, they're not adults, which, which is, which, which, that's what makes it hard. Yeah. They are adults in many areas of their lives. Legally. Legally and also mentally, but yeah. on, on some other areas, they're still got a long way to go. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's life. They need to figure life out by themselves. Yep. Of course, as dads, tú dices, no, espérate, güey, no la regues. Yo, así, espérate, por allá no. Y la chica, they don't care. They, they, and you know what? They need to go through what they need to go through. Yep. And if you don't let him go through that, and believe me, I have learned the hard way since they were little kids, because because they're very good teachers. They they teach you. Conforme van creciendo, te van educando. Yeah. Te vas educando tú y luego los vas educando a ellos y ellos te educan a ti que estás haciendo mal. Te lo enseñan. Te dicen, hey, por acá no, güey. Me estás educando mal, cabrón. No, o sea, te lo enseñan con su manera de actuar, con su manera de hablarte, con su manera de de estar contentos, de no estar contentos, they teach you, they say, hey, por acá no, cabrón. Mm. No, y, y cuando están bien, cuando están, digo, también no todo es tu responsabilidad. I have to say that for yeah. all those young parents out there that feel that, oh, my God, I did it so wrong, it is all my fault or your fault, es la culpa. No, man, también estaba leyendo un estudio, eh, donde de, de una buena fuente que también eso es otra cosa hay que ver de dónde a, y a quién le crees man porque luego sale cada tarugada y ahí anda uno creyendo pero bueno estaba leyendo un estudio de eh, en, creo que era de New York Times y decía el 60% 70% de la educación que tienen los niños ahora no son de los papás man entonces tú podrás hacer lo que tú quieras y bailarles un zapateado y hacer lo que sea y enseñarles, mira, cabrón, ve el video, güey, ve, veme lo que me pasó, yeah, cabrón, ve. Yeah. Le creen más a otro chavito en la escuela o le creen a, más a un TikTok yeah. o le creen más a, a, a otra cosa y, y, y le tienen que pasar por donde le tienen que pasar para que digan, wow, no, sí es cierto. Yeah. Ahorita le acabo de pasar a mi hijo una cosa muy interesante. A mi hijo Leonardo. Fue a ver un concierto. No voy a decir de quién. Pero de alguien que andaba este, por ahí eh, en México. En México fue. Eh, hace como un par de meses. Alguien que andaba muy alto en su cabeza. Y él decía, wow, this is a huge artist, dad. Y yo le decía, güey, este cabrón ni canta, ni compone, ni hace nada. Nomás está famoso el güey, nada más. No, es que tú no entiendes. No entiendes porque te dan celos y la fregada. Digo, no, no, no va a dar celos, por el amor de Dios. Son dos cosas diferentes. Cada quien tiene su público y para yeah. todos sale el sol. Yep. Bueno, eventually he went and see, he went to go see this artist. Y salió pues bien decepcionado el güey, dice, no, es que esta chava no, o sea, no, no nada, o sea, no es un artista, no me entretuvo nada, o sea, nada más todo el mundo grita, si levanta un dedo, este, los chavos brincan, pero ella no está brincando, o sea, eh, dice, no tiene nada que ver yeah. con lo que tú nos has enseñado, y digo, ah, caray, bueno, pues, no todo es así, le dije, of course there are some very good artists right now, yeah. of course, le dije, pero sí, es importante que te des cuenta que como público, le dije, you have to always um, 
exigir para que tus artistas sean buenos, man. Les damos mucha chance. Mm. Y pagamos mucho dinero. I was just talking about that. There's like starting tickets are like 300, it goes up to 600, yet para arriba. It's crazy. And they're not even a band freaking playing anymore. Call me old fashioned, but you're not getting your money's worth. I mean, you're not. Lo que menos puede hacer un artista que se dice músico es pues, tocar música, ¿no? O sea, aunque sea electrónica, man. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. There are some that do that, that really actually play, even if it's an electronic music. Y hay otros DJs que nada más le ponen play ¿no? y, yep. tienen, y tienen grabado todo su gig y brincan. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Get ready for the drop. Here comes the drop. Hey, hey, hey. Boom. And it's recorded a week ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't do <laughs> And we pay money to go see that. Yeah. Yeah. That, those are the worlds we're living, man. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I still enjoy hitting a note and getting the chills when I, when I, when I do a good song and when I connect with people. And I hope that never goes away. Yeah. I mean, that other artists keep on doing that. It, it, it's cool. You know, I, you have said that you are one of two that still wear the charro suit. Who's, who, by the way, who's, who's the other one? I think Alejandro Fernandez. Mm. Yeah. So what does that mean to you to, to carry on that, that tradition? I don't know how to, I don't know how to take it yet because if we're the last two of the Mohicans, that means that we're doing something that people don't like anymore. You know, I mean, they like us. They're like both of us. Yeah. Love you guys. You know? Yeah. But it means that there is not enough of us for people to apoyar ese rollo ya. Yeah. Ojo. They're going to keep on apoyando el mariachi. Mm -hmm. Ve como nos va. Ve como lo va a Karim León. Ve como le va a Cristiano Dal. Ve como le va a la nueva generación que canta con mariachi. Mi mariachi es good and dandy. Yep. No hay ningún problema with mariachi. La bronca es que ya los que se visten de charro ya, bye. Y a lo mejor un güey se vestirá de charro para sacar un disco y todo, pero he will gravitate to whatever it is the way that he dresses normally, mm -hmm. which I think it's okay. It, it's, it's cool to evolve. It, it's cool. Would you, would you ever walk out on stage and perform like this, the way you're dressed right now? Not this way, because no. no. <laughs> uh, but, but, si que no sea vestido de charro, why not? Yeah. I mean, yo soy charro de verdad, con y sin el traje de charro. Campeón nacional de charrería, cuatro veces, re, actual campeón por Zacatecas de, de charrería. Tengo dos equipos charros, llevo 26 años charreando. You know, hay un dicho que dice el hábito no hace al monje. But not, not everybody is the way that I am. I, I, I truly respect charreria and, and what it means. So that's why if one day I come out dress, not dressed as a charro, it's not out of disrespect. Yeah. Yeah, I also think that trends, that, that, that fashion comes in waves. Right. Mm -hmm. So, well, maybe there's not a lot of, you know, young performers dressing in, 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 in charro suits. In a few years, it'll it could come back in style. You know, it could be yeah. a, another wave of, of that. And, and we see it all the time. Right. Where traditions, the classic look, they come back into style. Puede ser, puede yeah. ser, y no lo dudo. Pero sí creo que la manera en que nos formamos estos dos últimos que estamos, yeah. y eso ya no existe. Mm. That, that's, that's. Hace poquito hice un video con Mark Anthony. Tiene mi edad. Somos 1968, both of us. We started almost at the same time, our, our, our careers. 
Um, we have several, very similar paths. Él en el mundo tropical y yo en, en, el mundo music, en el mundo regional mexicano. Y estábamos platicando precisamente de, de cómo son diferentes las maneras de empezar ahora y las maneras de trabajar y and your goals. They're, they're just totally different. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you work your goals? You know, ahorita es, en un mes puedes estar number one in the world. En un año puedes estar llenando arenas. Al, al compa este, al Fernández, que te dije, y a mí, nos tardamos 10 años en llenar arenas. Yeah. And grinding, and grinding. Y Marc Anthony lo mismo. Yeah. And Luis Miguel, no, él lo desde, desde chiquito empezó a llenar arenas. <laughs> right, right. Él desde que estaba chiquito. No, but no, 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 it's true. That's not true. Él le costó también como siete, ocho años para hacerse grande, 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 grande. Yeah. Los bookies, quien me digas, man. O sea, era otro tipo, era otra la manera de trabajar. Ahora, todo está bien. La onda está que te compares, es ahí, es ahí es donde está mal. Cada quien tiene su historia. Yep. Yo creo en lo que yo creo. Y así voy a seguir trabajando. Y estoy abierto a cambiar esa manera de creer, pero no a cambiar mi esencia. Ya. Yeah. That's it. Estás abierto, you're open-minded to collaborating with, with other artists that are, are coming out now. I know there's like the cumbia norteño, right? That's coming out with like Grupo Frontera, like that, that vibe, that energy. And then the corridos tumbados, right? Of, of that genre or genres that are coming out now. Who would you, who do you see yourself potentially open to collaborating with? Same, man. I think what's happening is good. That there's variety in the music in Spanish. It starts to sound something that never had sounded before. No? Eh, la cumbia norteña no, la cumbia norteña sí ha sonado de hace muchos, 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 muchos años, pero sí el rollo de los corridos tumbados y, y esto que está haciendo Eslabón Armado y, y, y todas estas bandas, es un sonido nuevo. Ya, yeah. ya. Yeah. 100%. Eh, Yaritza y sus hermanos. Eh, that's a new sound. That is completely developed. I don't think so. It's getting there for sure. You can hear that it's getting better. Yeah. And by by the week because everybody's doing it. So you hear people trying you you know. And eventually I think it's going to be an a freaking amazing 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 new sound. Yeah. A new genre that is going to stay there for a damn while. Porque, porque tiene un montón de, de elementos muy cabrones. O sea, yeah. virtuosismo. Tienes que tocar. Ahí tienes que tocar. Ahí no te puedes hacer güey como lo que te acabo de decir. De, hey, wait for the drop. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, aquí tienes que tocar, cabrón. Yeah. Y, y, igual y los cantantes, pues, también el cantar de la manera como cantan no está fácil. Perdóname. O sea, no está fácil. Yo se los he dicho a mis hijos muchísimas veces. Porque al principio se burlaban de dos que tres voces. Y le digo, espérense, güeyes. O sea, aquí, y les puse al, al Lalo el Gallo Elizal, del papá de Valentín, por ejemplo, right. ¿no? Y la chinga. O, 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 o este, o, o Chalino. Chalino. What the fuck is that? <laughs> you know? And I love it. Yeah, yeah. I freaking love it. Yeah. Suena increíble. Y ahora, es ese tipo de ondas que la pueden hacer los chavos, it, pero como se comunican ahora y a su manera, no está fácil. You have, you have to really be that thing. 
Yeah. Whatever that is. It's 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 a uh, it's unique. It's unique. So, como canta Yaritza está bien chido. I like it. And, and you got to give her a chance, you know. Al principio era que what the Oh my gosh, what the hell is that? ¿Qué es eso, cabrón? <laughs> y, y la segunda vez dije, oh my gosh. Y la tercera dije, wow, I like it. <laughs> you know, it's just different. Yeah. And everything that is different scares us. For sure. Change. So, is, change is, it. Is change scary, itself. yeah. Especially for people like me. Mm. If you're not open, you're terrified all the time. I'm, I love it. I love. I love change. Um, I, and, and there are some things that I don't like. Like I don't. I don't like tantas malas palabras. I fucking get it that you're tough and you can tell them. Yeah. It, it, pero tantas, 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 tantas. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, it's just not my style. You know, it reminds me of of the you know the the early birth of hip hop, right? Hip hop was was clean. There was no bad words in hip hop when when it first came out. And then there was like gangster rap, right? And then there was a lot of curse words and then there was a lot of you know, uh like sexual in, innuendos and things like that. And I feel like the way I see uh corridos tumbados, it's sort of that. It's like a it's like a mesh of la música regional mexicana and and hip hop, you know? Like Even the, in in the the way they they dress, right? They're the they some of the guys are dressed like like a hip hop artist, you know. And and the lyrics is sound como a veces como rapeando, you know. And I feel like it's like a mesh of of Mexican American. Sí, a little bit there. Yo right? creo yo creo que sí, definitivamente. Eh, tocas un punto importante. Cada vez que hay un movimiento nuevo que es disruptivo y y que es es contra cultura. Yeah. Pues tiene que ser radical. Yeah. History can teach us a thing or two if we go back. This is not the first time that this is happening. Yeah. Of course not. <laughs> yeah. You know? So it's just I mean, as a Mexican American yourself, yeah. Can you see yourself collaborating with with one of those guys? I, I mean, it depends on the project, but of course. Yeah. Yeah. Como te dije, igual y it, 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 it's, it's developing, it's yeah. growing, it's, it's maturing as we speak. That's my humble opinion. Who am I, you know, to say anything? Yeah. And who cares what I, what I say? But it, it, that's my opinion, you know? Eso es lo que yo creo como músico, como alguien que tiene la carrera que tengo. O sea, yo lo veo positivo. Creo que es rough around the edges. Una de esas cosas es... It's, it's a growing genre. It's a growing genre. Creo que eh, eh, es tremendamente importante que se haga pensar a la gente, no nada yeah. más reaccionar. Eh, y, y eso viene con la poesía, viene con acomodar las palabras de una manera que te mueva. Como el spoken word, por ejemplo. Yeah. Eh, que hace que you feel things. Yeah. Que you think about que, que, que you sometimes don't want to deal with. Porque en, en determinado momento decir, eh, la que lo que, pues everybody understands that. Ah, <laughs> siga echarte tequila, la madre, y todo lo que sea. Balazos, no, balazos, no sé. Yeah, no, 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 no. But they do that too. Yeah. En México aplauden a balazos también en muchas partes. O sea, everybody understands that energy. Pero creo que hace falta que también en determinado momento... Por ejemplo, el corrido de Juanito este de, de Calibre 50, no sé si te acuerdas, que habla de, de un compa que trabaja acá de este lado y, y que vive toda su vida pues, jardinero, cocinero, barrendero, y nadie lo toma en cuenta, nadie lo pela, nadie lo nada. Es un corrido. So it depends on what you want to say. Yeah, and I can cry with that. I, every time I hear it, it gives me the chills. My papa was a homeless man, and in in this, aquí en Olvera Street, se dormía y wow, y y este y trabajaba de peón y de lava platos y de lo que fuera, and and uh, 
Wow. Yo creo que definitivamente puedes hablar de muchas cosas cuando la gente te está oyendo. No nada más de una sola. Y ahorita nomás se habla de una sola en los corridos. Pero por eso es como el Génesis. Está empezando el rollo. ¿Cuántos años llevan los corridos tumbados? ¿Qué? ¿Unos cuatro? Yeah. ¿Cinco? Cinco a lo máximo, I think. That, that's really out in the in mainstream, for sure. O sea que faltan unos cuantos años más todavía. Yeah. Yeah. ¿Cuánto se tardó el reggaetón? ¿Cuánto yeah. se tardó el hip hop? ¿Cuánto se tardó cualquier género? Yeah. Nada más que también las cosas ahora van más rápido. So maybe in a couple of years ya salen como ahorita lo que te decía. It's crazy, que Salió en la canción esta de peso, de, del eslabón armado con peso pluma. Yep. What, six months ago? Yeah. Now there are hundreds of new bands that play like eslabón armado. Hundreds. Yeah. Okay, maybe a rato alguien se le ocurre meter un chingado a saxofón. Right. Which they haven't done. And it sounds different. Yeah. No, and you and you hear that in in that in that in that genre, right? Like sometimes you just hear the el bajo, right? And then you hear sometimes you hear trumpets. Sometimes you hear now I'm starting to hear like a I heard a piano not that long ago. There's little different types of instruments that are being introduced. So yeah, I I 100% agree. It's 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 in it, its infancy. Completamente. But it's it's already. I think uh, it, it, there's some beauty to it, right? Because like like you a said, there's lot, live live instruments. A lot of beauty. Y espérate porque al rato todo el mundo vamos a andar haciendo cosas en eso. Pe quizás no va a sonar como suena ahorita. Quizá no. O sea, yo, yo, yo cuando me imagino haciendo más o menos este tipo de onda con un bajo, con un contrabajo, este, el tololoche, este, el que se... Pues eso lo oigo yo desde que tengo tres, cuatro años con... Yep. En, en el rancho con don, este, tocando el violín y un, José la guitarra y Baldo el, el tololoche y así se toca. Yeah. That's something that it's oldest you know hasta más old que <laughs> y, 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 y qué padre que ahora lo hagan los chavos y yeah. que lo vean como nuevo y lo agarren y oh my god y la docerola que it's a 12 string guitar pero yep. que le dicen docerola fine que le digan como se les pegue su regalada gana pero que le sigan tocando como la tocan oh my god la batería man holy crap they're like possessed <laughs> <laughs> que Neil Peart ni que latiz nada o sea que Rush ni que nada yeah. y they don't even question it, that's the way it goes yeah. si vas a tocar batería en una banda nueva, en un, o sea en un grupo you have to be freaking good, si no no yeah. lo haces man nos falta un poquito en la cantada todavía pero creo que ahí, ahí van, ahí vamos y en las letras definitivamente que They need to expand, and and it's just a matter of time. Yeah, no, for sure. It's a passionate subject for me. Sorry. No, and I and I appreciate you sharing that that with me. I, I would love to talk about your your personal discography, right? What was that song for you that you feel changed your life? What was that first song? Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, lo que pasa es que hay muchas en diferentes um, niveles, comercialmente, musicalmente, artísticamente. Yo creo que comercialmente me cambió la vida eh, por mujeres como tú. Mm. Y le pensé un poco, porque antes de esa había estado Recuérdame Bonito, que es una canción de Joan Sebastián que también me cambió la vida. Pero por mujeres como tú, como que me abrió un camino del cual ya no, ya no podía regresar. Could, that was the... A ver, ¿cómo va? ¿Cómo va? 
la de me estoy acobardando y lo han notado y eso no es muy bueno para mí si quiero retenerla entre mis brazos será mejor que no me vea sufrir sí man la he cantado like Give it up, man. Give Thank it you. up. See. I was just telling you to see if you would do it, and you did it. <laughs> Thank you. Of course I can. How oh, about yeah. Recuérdame Bonito? That was one of your earlier yeah. songs too, right? Yeah. Tell me about, about that. Because I loved that song. That was, I, I was, I don't, you're, like, you're, you're, a, you're a very young man. I don't want to make you, you know feel old right now but i was in elementary school dedicating that song to girls <laughs> that was i was maybe like seven years old and my feels you know my feelings go what, what do you remember about putting that song out oh man that, that was that was a biggie for me because that was the first album that i didn't produce up until then todos los demás anteriores yo los había producido. Los primeros discos de banda, el disco de rock, lo había producido. Y este disco era con mariachi. El primer disco que hacía con mariachi. Y lo, lo producía Joan Sebastián. Man. Entonces era como... Pues Joan Sebastián era grande, muy grande. No era tan grande como al final de su vida, pero era grande. We're talking about 99. I'm talking about age. I'm talking about artistically. He was big. He was not that big. He was big. Back in 1992. 1992. So that's when he produced Recuérdame Bonito. Y Joan tenía una manera de trabajar donde él, todas las canciones que hacía, las grababa. O sea, no era como Juan Gabriel que de repente le hacía canciones a algún cantante y le guardaba esa canción nada más a ese cantante. No, Joan wrote a song and he recorded it. He didn't get it. Y ya llegaba y te la daban, eh, esta canción es nueva para ti. Pero no, ya la había sacado él. Siempre, <laughs> siempre, all the time. Y Recuerda de Bonito fue una de esas. No la escribió exactamente para mí, pero sí la dedicó, porque después sí la restringía. Te la daba a ti y ya no la podía grabar nadie más. Nada más él. Y, y bueno, fue un disco que me abrió puertas que antes con la banda no había tenido. Las estaciones pop nunca yep. me habían tocado. Las estaciones de radio. There was, there was a thing for you young, young people that are watching this called radio stations before where us artists used to be played. And uh, <laughs> ahora ya no hay. Before, ya. before streaming. Exactly. You had to wait to hear your favorite song yeah it was like, oh let me just hear it right now no 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 you have to listen to the radio for for a while Isn't before your, your favorite song came out Isn't and that... then and then you would record it yeah on tape right cassette um, yeah y se oía el, el, el id de la estación no 98.7 y ahí no le hace pero ahí la tenías grabada porque no hay de una de otra no sí, yeah. sí por supuesto yeah anyway Sí, Recuérdame Bonito fue como en el 92, that's why we were talking yep. about that. Y no era tan grande Joan, pero sí era grande. Y, y nos ayudó muchísimo ese disco a los dos. Porque el disco vendió mucho, mucho, mucho. Me puso mi primer número uno. Y él como productor se fue para arriba. Empezó a producir a, a gente muy grande. A gente que antes no había podido producir. Yo a Joan lo conocí con mi mamá, este, porque le dio canciones a mi mamá cuando yo era un niño. Y ahí lo conocí y me cayó muy bien desde entonces. Luego yo crecí y entonces ya cuando hicimos este disco ya nos conocíamos. Ya éramos amigos, aunque él me llevaba 20 años. De todas maneras, there was, there was a lot of, uh, como con, congeniábamos, uh -huh. ¿no? Los dos de rancho, nos gustaban los caballos, etcétera. Mucho las muchachas. Entonces, sí. Y ahí, con Recuérdame Bonito, eh, empezó otra, otra historia en mi vida, porque pasa el tiempo, es un éxito tremendo. Yo quiero tener continuidad. Le digo a Joan, hey, let's make another album. You know, let's make 
Entonces, se da pues, un continuity here. Dice, claro, me encantaría, dejar hablar con la disquera porque el primer disco pues casi no me pagaron. Necesito que me paguen. Which is... Yeah, yeah. I mean, duh, of yeah. course. Entonces digo, yo te, yo te apoyo, yo voy y también les digo. Y les pidió el doble de lo que había pedido, que tampoco era mucho. Uh -huh. La compañía no se los dio y no me hizo el disco. Y llegó y me dijo, Pepe, sorry, man, pero... I'm not, I'm not going to do your album. Oof. That was, that was the first, como, uh, reality check de, de mi carrera. Porque todo había, sido, todo había sido como muy bonito y muy dandy. Y hasta ese momento donde dije, pero ¿cómo? O sea, it was a success for you, for me. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Why is the record company doesn't want to pay for this? And, I mean... I, I, probably we can pay for it. Le decían, papá, me prestes dinero. Yeah. No, yo tampoco tengo dinero para prestarte. It was like, holy crap. Okay. So I became a producer of mariachi. That made me a producer of mariachi. I was already a producer, but of rock and banda. I never produced mariachi in my life. So then I didn't have somebody to produce my album, so I produced it. Wow. It, no era así como que nada que me amedrentara o que intimidated me because I'm a musician there. It's normal. I didn't do it before because I never did mariachi, but hey, this guy doesn't want to do it. It's no big deal. I can do it. Yeah. And I did it. Y empecé a producir mariachi. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I know Juan Sebastián, obviously, a legendary composer producer singer i did a lot of the i mean did a lot but like in in vicente fernandez career at the end he did a, he did some of the last last albums and final songs that that chente recorded uh, mm -hmm. did, did you get a chance to to work with chente or or colla we, collaborate any any way we didn't collab in any in in a song but we we were close we were friends I was friends with uh, his kids. No tanto con Alejandro, sí con Gerardo y con Vicente por la charrería, because mm -hmm. they were too. Entonces, what do you what do you remember of, of Vicente Fernández? Yeah. No, pues era un artistota, man. Era un era un gran entertainer. He he was He was the real thing, así como de los grandes, grandes, pues como mi jefe también, o sea, eran como de otra madera todavía, eran, eran muy, con mucho oficio, with a lot of, uh, it was just a different, otra madera, they were made of a different material. Yeah, different fabric for sure. Yeah, man, And pero era toda madre el señor, la verdad. Me acuerdo que un día me regaló un traje, un traje de charro. Este. Oh, man, I don't know if I should tell you this or not. Tell me, tell me, <laughs> tell me, tell me. Oh, man. Because. O sea, lo que único que tengo yo es respeto por don Vicente Fernández. Pero sí me robó a mi sastre. <laughs> <laughs> ok. <laughs> Y digan lo que digan y, 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 y digan con todo respeto, it is what it is. El señor Lucio Ugalde era mi sastre y se lo llevó a vivir a Guadalajara, le puso una casa al lado de su casa. And he only worked for him. Ok. <laughs> y este... For, for those that don't know what sastre is. A, 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 a tailor. A tailor. He yeah. took your tailor. <laughs> And then he gave me this suit that this tailor made yeah. for me, which used to be my tailor. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm sure that Don Vicente didn't even realize yeah. that, that he was taking El Sastre from me. Nada más que este hombre era muy bueno y seguramente le hizo un traje, le gustó, le dijo, véngase para acá, y el señor le dijo, pues claro. No le dijo, no, es que le estoy haciendo eh, ropa 
El hijo de Antonio Aguilar, which is an emerging singer. Yeah. And I don't know, gee, should I go with you or should I stay with him? You know, it was a very difficult decision for Padre Sastre. Yeah. yeah. So he, he went with Vicente. Yeah, yeah. Of course. But it was funny that later in life, like seven, eight years after he went there, Vicente gave me a suit made by the guy. That's funny. <laughs> That's, you guys have, have Sastre... Taylor beef. Yes. <laughs> and, and I didn't tell him anything, of course. Yeah. Vicente Fernandez te está regalando un traje. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, really? It's like, and he was my idol, one of my idols. Yeah. yeah. Muchas de las canciones que cantaba al principio, las cantaba más alta de mi tesitura, because I wanted to sing like Vicente. Like, ah, hasta arriba como cantaba. Y de hecho, yeah. el, el disco que le hice homenaje hace unos años, Canto las canciones en el mismo tono que las cantaba. Porque wow. I, wanted, I wanted to do it, ¿no? O sea, como respetar esa tesitura. I don't sing at that, at, at, at esa tesitura. A, soy un barítono, yo soy barítono, yo soy tenor. And I love it. I love to sing, and I, ha, I love to have that range that I have. I love to sing más abajo. Me gusta cantar más abajo. I really enjoy it. Pero cantar como Vicente... Tuve que ponerme una faja y no herniarme. <laughs> <laughs> La lastly, you know, I want to I want to talk about your 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 pops, your dad. You know, we mentioned him earlier. You know, the the great, the legendary Antonio Aguilar. What do you remember about him the most? You know, he was he was a very stable guy, a very balanced human being. that uh, creates an energy that gives you peace, whether it's uh, your family member or not. And he was like that. He was a very balanced human being. Um, I don't, a man's man. So it was a privilege to be around a guy like that. He was truly a man's man. That, that's why he's remembered the way he's remembered up until now. He died 16 years ago. And still he's admired and respected and revered and remembered. And, you know, it's, and it's because of that. It's because he was not an average, normal human being. It's very hard to have those standards and thrive everybody wants to pull you down you know e everybody wants to make you part of something that is not uh, with the right um i want to say, say integrity mm -hmm. and values and he kept really como que he stand his ground all the time I guess that's why he was so respected by powerful people and humble people and politicians of every party and colleagues of any genre. You know, he was, I remember him as a big, big, big persona. So when I, when I see my kids, it's, it's like, it's, it's not easy, you know, for them to come from something like that. So if you le to a Leonardo, no, pues, tu abuelo is Antonio Aguilar, tu papá is Pepe Aguilar, and tu hermana is Angela Aguilar, you got to find your way para que no te llegue eso. Yeah. Yo, I was completely oblivious about who my father was. He was just my dad. I was just proud of him. But it was never a competition. Yeah. I never saw him like I needed to do something because he was like that. And probably that's why I, I was able to do what I have been able to do. Porque it was never about him. It was, él me enseñó a, a tener autoestima y me enseñó también, o sea, en su ejemplo. Yeah. Que you get what you, what you give. You get what you give. That's it. A la tiznada. No, nadie te hace favores. 
No tiene nada que ver que te apellides como te apellides. Porque ahí están todos los ejemplos de... Inclusive en la familia de Fernández o en mi familia. Con otros güeyes que se apellidan igual que nosotros. No es lo mismo. Yeah. Y no es porque no tengan con qué. Sino es porque... It's not only about singing good. And it's not only about having talent. It's about so many other things. Que tienen que ver con las cosas que te digo de mi papá. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Pepe, thank you for that. I, I appreciate you talking about your 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 story and and your and your father. It's uh it's beautiful to to hear. Before I let you go, I have rapid fire with Pepe Aguilar. Let's do it. Favorite food dish. Huevos en salsa. Greatest singer of all time. Ooh, that's really really hard, man. But. Of all genres. Voy a pensar en 10 ahorita y voy a hacer como una ruleta porque hay, okay. hay, hay varios. Oh, man, that was a hard one. Um, oh. Okay, of all genres. Who's, who's on the tip of your tongue? Es que hay dos. Steve Perry, yeah. Steve Perry. Te iba a decir Javier Solís, pero anyway. Greatest rapper, your favorite rapper, Tupac. Tupac. Best song to play at a party. Any song with mariachi, cualquier son, como el son de la negra o alguno que cualquier son que any any mariachi song. Lastly, <laughs> what's what's a nickname a, a, a son son song? A son song. What's a nickname of yours that no one really knows about? A nickname of mine, Pepe Toño. Pepe Toño. Yeah. I like that. Pepe Toño. Well, and I hate it. Pepe Toño. Yes, I want to thank you for coming. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tomando and friends. Hey. Pepe Aguilar, make some noise. Hey. Thank you. This is this is your home. Gracias, Mando. And you can come to Mando and friends anytime, Pepe. Mando, lo pasé increíble. Gracias por tu tiempo. Gracias a todo tu equipo. Gracias a tu público, gracias eh, por permitirme hablar de cosas que normalmente no hablo. So, thank you so much, and let's do it again. Thank you, yeah, let's do it again. Pepe Aguilar, thank you, and thank you so much for watching and listening to Mondo and Friends, presented by Verizon.